Joining us now via Zoom is Lori Hidauza to take a look at Mr. Trump's statement. Thank you, Lori Hidauza, for joining us on the news. Thank you so much for having me. And how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for joining me. Now, what do you make of President Trump's tag for places of worship as essential services providers? Well, I think that every church knew that eventually they would reopen. And hopefully the pastors have been strategizing and working towards a viable plan to reopen their houses of worship. Uh, certainly it took most churches by surprise that it was happening today and that on Friday he's telling churches to reopen on Sunday. Um, I don't believe that it's a realistic uh, achievement for this Sunday for most houses of worship. Uh, for them to reopen in a safe manner, I believe that some pastors will need some time to strategize with their leadership in order to have a place that's safe and conducive for worship where people can come to, to pray, to honor God, and to also be confident that they're not going to uh, be infected by the coronavirus. So it's going to take them a little bit of time, I believe, uh, to reopen. Uh, but most, most governors had already started. So some churches had already planned on opening this Sunday. I know that my church in Delaware, where my parents are the pastors, they were instructed by their governor last week that this Sunday they were to reopen with 30% occupancy. And it's taken them an entire week of putting systems in order to make sure that the church is as safe as possible for the, the congregation to be able to worship this Sunday. Now, Laurie, do you think this proclamation by President Trump reflects, reflects the wishes of Americans? Well, you know, I think it's interesting. He, he made a very strong argument that I don't think anybody can fault. And that's by saying that uh, places of abortion and liquor stores are considered essential services, so why not churches? And any religious organization is, is going to look at that and say, well, there's some merit to that. So... Um, you know, I think that his, his method of doing it now um, is taking people by surprise. Uh, and then him saying that he's going to uh, fight against the governors. Uh, if the governors don't stand by his directive, I think that's a little bit bullish. But I believe that, um, you know, it, the, argument, the argument stands. I mean, if, if places for abortion and places to consume alcohol are considered essential services, then certainly why not a place of prayer? But do you consider places of worship, religious worship, indeed as essential services? Do I? Absolutely. I believe that worship is essential. Now, how we worship, whether we worship in our homes, whether we worship online as we have been for the last nine, ten weeks, uh, worship is essential. And, um, you know, the scripture talks about not, a, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as believers. And I know that people have genuinely missed coming together with their brothers and sisters in Christ uh, to worship. So I believe that there's a, a human need that we have to gather with people of like faith. So in some ways, yes, it is essential, uh, but starting it without a solid plan is where I would kind of say that maybe there needs to be a little bit more caution. All right, finally, Lori, before I let you go, what would you recommend? Many religious houses here in Nigeria have already are clamoring for opening, where we have many state governors already lifting the ban on religious gatherings. Now, we know there's, there's a rule about 20 people gathering at the same time, but most religious houses, yeah. we, have, we have them in their hundreds, in their thousands. How do you see this playing out here in Nigeria and even in the USA, and what would you recommend as measures for prevention? Well, I love what the NCDC is already doing. I love some of the direction that the Presidential Task Force has given, where they've said, you know, uh, if you are reopening, and let's say you have a 20 person or a percentage as they have in Delta State of your total capacity or whatever, whatever the case may be, if you're reopening, you have to do it in a safe way. You have to have temperature monitor stations, hand washing stations, social distancing, um, a limited percentage of your total capacity. I think that these types of instructive guidelines really help uh, the pastors and help the churches to open in a way that is optimal for the people in the congregation. So I believe the church in Nigeria will be reopening very closely behind America. And I just hope that we do it in a safe way um, and not in a way that just kind of pushes us out there unprepared. I believe that we can do it, but we have to be ready for the changes 
that will come with the new normal that we have since the coronavirus came into our community. Laura Hidalgo says, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me.